Hey, what's going on guys? It's JC from Motion VFX here. And in today's video, we're going to be diving into Emma Central's handwritten pack for DaVinci Resolve. So let's jump straight into it. So once you've installed the pack via the Emma installer, you'll want to head over to the effects tab and search in Emma Central's handwritten. Here you're going to find over 60 different titles, six effects, and five different transitions. Now this is quite a large pack, but everything still works on a drag and drop basis, where we'll drag the title onto the timeline or the affected transitions onto the clips. And diving further into this pack, you can see that we have seven different sections. The first one being the six different effects, and then everything between add-ons to typography are all the different titles, and then we finish with the five different transitions. And to really familiarize yourself with everything the pack has to offer, I recommend opening up each of the tabs and then just hovering over the different graphics available. This will allow you to see what's really possible with the pack and if there are any that catch your eye, all you need to do is hit the favorites button on the right and that will be much easier to find. So we'll get started in the title section dragging on one of the add-ons. So by default, this is how it looks. So to start customizing these titles, what we'll do is head into the Spectre tab on the right. And the first thing you'll want to do if you're editing on a 4K timeline is hit this 4K quality box. This is just going to ensure the sizing and the quality is correct. Next, we'll head to the top where we have these in and out points. These are just going to control the animation when the layer starts and ends. And now diving into the customization tabs, we have the content controls. And this is the overarching control center that's going to allow you to control the entire graphic. So that is everything for the position, the scale, and the different rotation options. If you do manipulate it a bit too much and you do want to reset that, all we need to do is just double click on the option and it will snap back to the default. And now we'll move on to the description. So this will control the text that we have here, which is currently the text code, but you can change it to whatever you like with any font, color or positioning. Then from here, I think I'll keep this font because it does match this handwriting text. Then at the bottom of this tab, we have some aspects that are actually new to most of the effects titles. And that is this description quake and description frame drop. So you can see as I play it through, we have this kind of jitter effect. If I was to go to static, you're now going to see on the text, it's completely still, and that jitter effect is no more. So you do have the option whether you do want to jitter up or you can just keep it still. And dive into the frame drop options. Right now we can see it moves around at quite a decent pace. If I was to drop that to one, you can see it moves around a lot more. So as you've guessed it, if I increase this number, you're going to see it moves a lot less now. So just keep that in mind, the higher the number of frame drops you have, the less it's going to move. So I think where it was around three to four is a pretty good sweet spot. Next, we'll go into the callout controls, and this will control the white outline of the graphic we have here. So the first option we see is the stroke type. Again, something new to most of the effects where you can control how this stroke actually looks. So we have a plain option, a soft option, a sharp option, and a spray version. So you can go between all these options and pick the one that you favor the most. I quite like the sharp, but what I will do is just increase the thickness just a bit. From there, very similar to the description controls, we have a bunch of color and positioning options that you can dial in and customize. And once again, we do have the quake and frames up options, which work in the exact same way. And they will be quite a consistent part of this entire pack, having the options between the static and the jittering, as well as the frame drops. So for this, I think I will slow this down just so it's a little less distracting. I think there looks quite good, around 10, maybe a little bit faster. Let's go for seven. Yep, perfect. Then we'll go into the scribble controls, which you can see as I toggle on and off, it's just the marks inside the circle. So for this, I'm actually going to turn off, but if you want to keep it on, you can just change the thickness as well as the colors here. And then we have the chalk controls, which as you can see, as I toggle this on and off, gives us this texture that we do have here that kind of gives that cool chalk look that I personally quite like. You can then play around the sliders so you can really dial in how you'd want that to look. But I think at default, it looks pretty good to me. Lastly, we have the drop shadow controls, which will just help this title stand out against a brighter background. Now, I know that was quite a lot, but rest assured, now that you understand that, you'll be able to work through and use every other title inside this pack as they all use very similar elements. That includes the infographics like this pipeline title, the various different lists, and all the great typography options we have. Some may just require a little bit more work to get a finished result like this custom path text title we have. So this title is called the custom path text, and by default, it does come in this horseshoe shape, which is quite ironic because I have a horse on the screen, which was not intentional. But to start actually customizing the text shape, what you want to do is head to this menu here and hit Fusion Overlay. Then you're going to see all these red squares and they will control how your text looks. So if I drag this box here, you're going to see the text start to move. So if I wanted this to kind of go up and around the horse, just drag that. And if you missed that, if you do want to change the shape and the curvature of each point, all you need to do is just click on that point and then the yellow line and dots that come out of it, you can just drag those and they will allow you to have a curved edge. So let's go a little bit more. 
and then the same on this side. Now it goes up and above the horse rider. Now, of course, that was a very quick breakdown, but as you can see, this title has so much potential to really make your sequence stand out. Now we'll head onto the effects tab, and in this section, we will be dragging the effects directly onto the clips. So these six effects that we have here are essentially cool frames to put your footage in. So dragging this onto the clip, you can see that our footage has now been put into a box with a graphic in the top left. If I was to delete this effect and put the frame option on, we have a very similar effect, but now we have more going on in the frame. And it'd be the exact same for the last two options as well. Just remember to hit that 4K quality box if you are on a 4K timeline, and then dive into all the other tabs. Most of these will work in the exact same way as we did before, but we do now have the media tab, and that just controls your footage. It just allows you to manipulate how your footage looks inside the frame. And one great use that these effects do allow you to do is actually layer footage. So if I was to move this clip up one layer, then I'll place another clip under that, you can see we have this picture in picture mode. Now, of course, this does need adjusting as it's completely taking away from everything else. But if I was to decrease the size of that, maybe move it into the right corner. And now we have this cool effect where we're playing both clips at the same time. And to finish off, we have the transitions. These are super easy to use where you'll drag and drop the transitions between the clips and adjust the length of it by dragging this box here. Then the transition will automatically adjust to the length of time. And just like everything else in this video, you can fine tune and adjust the look of these inside the inspector tab until you get your desired result. So now let's create a sequence putting all these steps together. So let's say we're making a video recapping our recent trip to Cape Town using these five clips. The first thing I'll do is create an establishing title that's showing that we're in Cape Town. So I'll come down to the typography section, having a quick look through. That looks quite cool. That looks good. But I think I might go for something like this, make it quite big and bold so we can really announce Cape Town. So I'll drag that on, do all the usual steps. And then here I'll type in Cape Town adjust the scale yeah pretty good to me and you might notice as this plays back it's not actually animating out it's just simply cutting when the clip finishes even though we have the animate out option turned on because of the length of the clip there isn't enough time for the animation to both animate in and animate out but if i was to extend this to about three seconds you're now going to see it animates in and animates out so just be wary of that when you are creating titles and effects that if you have the length of clip too short the animations won't quite work and the same thing would happen if I was to turn off the animation in, you can see it starts in and now it perfectly animates out. Next, to go straight into the action, we'll drag a transition in between the clips. But as you can see, it's not currently letting me put it in between the clips. And that's simply because we are at the beginning of this clip. So there's nothing for the transition to attach onto. However, if I was to use the trim tool of pressing this or just hitting T, I can then slide this across. And then looking at that outline box on the left, you can see how much of the clip is actually sliding there. So I'll give it a little bit of room. Then I'll apply the transition and now you can see it sits in perfectly. Now we'll head back into the title section and something I thought about when I saw this clip of the birds flying is actually how birds migrate across different countries. So I can just put that in here using this handwritten box text. I'll make that 4K. And then in the first one, let's say they're going from Europe and the second one, they are going to Africa. Then I'll just adjust how this title looks. So I'm going to slide this down move the text box, let's put that a little bit lower, this one out here. And it's a little hard to see, I think on the darker backgrounds, so we're actually to the opposite and put this near the top. And then to add some context to these two words, I'll then add a description explaining why the birds migrate. So let's use the description one, we'll place that onto the timeline. So now that we've got that in, we'll just adjust the highlighting section using this slider here, and we'll go from fine food all the way to the end. And then just to make sure it pops up from the background a little bit more, we'll change the color of the highlighting text from blue to maybe a nice yellow like that. Moving on to the next clip where we have the King of the Jungle. So for this, I'll use the title of five, placing that on. Then from here, we'd of course have to adjust the lines to match up with the text. And then for this, I'm actually gonna change the stroke type to plain as I think that flows in a little bit more. I will just decrease the thickness slightly just to match up. And there we are. Then we have this clip of this penguin looking at the cameraman a little bit confused and it's a little strange. So I think here we could add some comedic value by placing a text box. So I'll add the text cloud 02, placing that on to adjust the timing. Then I'll move the cloud to the left. And then in the cloud controls, I'll just change where the tip is. And then from here is when I'm going to layer two different titles. 
So I'll go down and get the description five, stacking that on top. And I'm now going to slide this and place that exactly on top of the text box. And there we go. And now to finish off the sequence, I'll actually go into the effects tab and use one of the frames. So I'll just get one more clip, placing that on top. Then I think I'll go for this text frame, just slide it to the edge. We'll zoom in a touch on the footage just so the subject is more in focus. Then we'll add in some text that goes around this frame. So we have looking for your next adventure, visit Cape Town to experience nature's true beauty. That's spelled true correctly. There we go. And then something we do have here on the word town and on natures is it's going around the frame and it looks a little bit weird. So I'll actually just do a double space and that just allows a bit more space. The word goes around and fits around the frame perfectly. Next, I'm actually going to take off the chalk just so we can see the image clearly. And then we'll add a slight drop shadow so it stands out and makes that 3D effect on the background. And now looking at it, I'll actually adjust this to go back into the middle and then just make it a tad smaller up there. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So I hope this overview has been helpful for you to better understand how to use the pack. Remember, if you have any questions at all, please drop them down below in the comments or head to our website at motionbfx.com. I've been JC, and this has been your MSN Tools Hammer and Pack for Doing to Resolve. Catch you on the next one.